Rapture Library Update. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. And also welcome to the Brook Cherith. A lot is coming together on what the Lord is working here with the Rapture Library. An incredible project to reach so many souls in the days ahead, particularly at a very tender and prophetic time. If you are new to our channel, I highly recommend you check out our website, rapturelibrary.com. Also, if you've been with us for a while, definitely check it out. I just updated it the other day, added several new posters as well that you have never even seen as well. So definitely check it out. You could also see a little bit more of the progress of the exhibits, how they're coming along as well. A lot is coming together real quickly here at this important time. So definitely check it out and review particularly what the Lord has shown us. That is what is so important about this information is we are showing those in the days ahead information that we have seen. Information about the prophetic time that also testifies to the truth and accuracy of God's word. So I'm going to try to keep this video short because I am exhausted and so much is coming together. I've been running wide open like Buzzy the Hummingbird. It's been crazy. I'm definitely feeling it. I need your prayers for strength and energy and freedom from distractions and hindrances. There is a lot coming together, but this is definitely a very important time and we are in a spiritual battle. And particularly when we are working to gain territory from the enemy, we should expect resistance. And particularly here at this very important time, we are called to occupy. Hold that ground till he comes. So I definitely need your prayers. I need your help. So praise the Lord. A lot of work has been accomplished over the past few days. Finally finishing up several more exhibits. And this is what is exciting to me even though I am very tired. But to actually see these exhibits done and ready. They just need a good venue and means of transportation so that a lot more people can see them. But praise the Lord, so much has been accomplished. And also praise the Lord, a lot of the exhibits that are done, they are the most complicated and the largest exhibits too. So those are done and out of the way and we're actually working on the physically smaller and easier to construct exhibits right now. So the large part of the exhibits for the Rapture Library are done. There's still quite a bit of work to do, but the most complicated work is done. So praise the Lord, we got the Raisings, Resurrections, and Returnings exhibit done. We got both of the Spanish exhibits done. And this, this has really warmed my heart just to consider how we started. And even with the car hauler trailer that we were initially looking at. Initially, we only had enough room for about five feet of wall space for the Spanish section in its entirety. And now we have exhibits that are two and a half times larger. We're able to hold a lot more gospel tracts and resources and just get a lot more people to read and stand in front of the exhibits as well. Reach a lot more people in a whole lot more conducive manner as well. We got the time exhibit. This one was huge. It's almost 12 feet long just by itself. The Great Deception exhibit is now done, which showcases the Circle of the Earth investigation as well. And praise the Lord, we were also able to get the Israel exhibit done. Israel, the key prophecy marker. This covers the information about how Israel's replanting in 1948 was the exact fulfillment of Scripture and prophecy. And this is what we're passing on to them. Why we are in the last generation now. It's by understanding what did prophecy foretell about Israel, when to expect its replanting, and when was it replanted exactly on time. And so this is the information that we're passing on to them. Not just necessarily about the rapture, but the truth of God's word and prophecy and why we know the time. And the more that we understand what scripture foretells, we see where we are now today. And that's the information that's covered here on the poster, last generation information as well, in context of the prophecies given back at the time of Daniel and Ezekiel, and then how that would lead all the way up to where we are now. With the last generation and this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled and so that's part of our expectation but also seeing the truth and the power of god's word the more that we study israel and so we have additional information on there too the fig tree metaphor israel is not cast away very important information that also leads right into some new posters that i just posted and just made on the rapturelibrary.com this is the final countdown poster and have a whole exhibit for it now. I've updated it because I really wanted a display that summarized why are we looking at this time? Why do we have an expectation of where we are now today? It'd be because of three very important areas. The first one being the last generation, approaching the end of the last generation. That's how we see the day approaching. And we have a final countdown. 
We see the day approaching not because of signs that are at the end or at the day. We don't see the day approaching because of signs that we're seeing now today. We see the day approaching because of what we saw in the past, particularly with Israel being replanted in 1948. Realize that was 73 years ago. There are people alive today who saw that fulfillment who are looking for the return of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, based on something that happened 73 years ago. They're going forward like the wise men on what you may call old information, signs they saw in the past. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians today are really caught up in, oh, I got to see a sign today. What's happening this week? What's happening right now? How can we know the rapture is right now? I need a sign today. No. We see the day approaching because of signs we saw in the past and fulfillment of prophecy we saw in the past. And this leads us to our next point. In context of approaching the end of the last generation, we also saw rare celestial signs reminding us of Christ's first coming, which involved the Star of Bethlehem signs, which was the introduction to the Revelation 12 sign. And that is part of what led us to where we are now. Both of those two things, when we consider them, and Christ's promise in Scripture, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. When we consider the signs we saw in the past, that shows us the day approaching. Not signs right here, signs in the past. This is why we have to review what we have seen before. Just like the wise men, they had to constantly remind themselves of signs they saw a year and a half ago before they even saw the Messiah. Because of what they saw that led them to go forward in faith. And likewise for us. This is part of the whole reason we have the Rapture Library. It's for us today, for you to review. Why are we looking at today? Why are, You don't need to get caught up in looking at videos every single day trying to find new signs now. We have information. A lot of people are surprised. I, I don't subscribe to any channels. I don't have time to watch videos anyway. I'm not looking for new signs now. I already know this is the last generation. I'm going to get up and do something about it. I'm going to put legs on my faith because I already know the rest is going to be fulfilled within this window because we've already seen the fulfillment of prophecy. We've already seen celestial signs that reminded us of Christ's first coming. The Revelation 12 sign was great and awesome. And yes, that was the Revelation 12 sign. It had the Star of Bethlehem signs, which was a parallel of what the wise men saw, that was just the introduction that led right into the Revelation 12 sign. A lot of people don't even want to acknowledge the Revelation 12 sign. Hello, it had the Star of Bethlehem sign as a introduction. That alone should tell you to pay attention to what's coming next. The wise men went forward on just the Star of Bethlehem signs. Just that. And they went a year and a half later. They didn't have YouTube updates. They didn't constantly checking YouTube. Oh, oh, what sign's happening now this week? No. They went forward on what they saw in the past. And they went forward just on seeing the Star of Bethlehem signs because they knew it was at a very important prophetic time that relates back to Israel. The prophecies foretold at the time of Daniel. Remember that? Right there with Daniel, the time of captivity, foretold time of dispersion, all that. Also foretold the time of Christ. That's what the wise men saw at the very proper time when Scripture tells us it would be expected. And Scripture also tells us when to expect Israel to be replanted in the land and that this generation shall not pass to all these things be fulfilled. Scripture tells us what to expect. And this is why we can go forward here at the last generation because of the power of what Scripture has said thousands of years ago. And even given us the parallels of the wise men who saw the same celestial signs that we have seen in our time. That should catch our attention. It tells us time is running out. We don't need new signs. We already have plenty that tells us we should be rising up and we should be going out to meet the bridegroom. Because time is very short. This generation is running out of time real quickly. And the more that we review those celestial signs that hearken back to Christ's first coming, and reminded us of that, and then led right into the Revelation 12 sign, which rehearsed how the Lion of the tribe of Judah would be born of a virgin, the sign of the Son of Man. The connected times also 
exactly line up to the same time as Israel's 73rd anniversary, which just happens to be seven years shy of 80 total years too. There's a lot that tells us time is running out. And a third and very important thing is foretold specific warning cues that would be expected within the last generation of peace and safety. Warnings that have been building in tempo leading up to this exact same time with the Abraham Accord specifically. They even coming to the exact same day as the end count of the very important Revelation 12 sign. Which was introduced by the Star of Bethlehem signs. There's a lot that calls our attention to pay attention to the time that you're running out of time. There is a countdown. You will see the day approaching if you're watching. The day is approaching whether you are watching or not. Are you watching? Are you living as though you are running out of time? Definitely check out the poster and the link in the description box. It's on rapturelibrary.com. This exhibit is a very important part of the Rapture Library. To remind people in the future that yes, Scripture foretold all this. Jesus Christ foretold all this. And he wanted us to live in light. That when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Will he find people, his servants, just like the wise men, who rose up when they knew the signs, when they knew the prophetic time, the foretold time to expect the king. They rose up and they went out to meet him. Are we doing the same this is Christ's instructions. This is why we have this material tied together. Be ye ready. Christ's instructions went hand in hand with the information he gave. This is why he said and gave it to us. It wasn't for our morbid curiosity. It's not for our trivia information. He said, I'm telling you this time so you will see the day approaching. Because I want you to be ready. I want you to be found girded. I want you to have your lights burning. And I want you to be demonstrating faith. I want faith to be seen in your life when I come. Friends, God has given us some very important assets and tools, very important information that we can pass on to those in the days ahead. And this is the whole purpose of the Rapture Library. In those very important tender moments to reassure people the power of God's Word. There's going to be a lot of distractions, a lot of delusions, a lot of deceptions in the days ahead. The more that we can point them to the truth and power of God's Word and that they are at a prophetic time, the more they will search Scripture and lean on Scripture and put their faith in Jesus Christ. The more that they see the power of it actively working in their life. That yes, this is true right now. Jesus Christ is the one who foretold us to expect all these things. We do not know the day or hour, but we have a lot telling us. Just like the wise men, we can go forward in faith expecting to find certain things at the arrival time, within the time that we are foretold. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And this is the information we're passing on to them, that Scripture is true. When to watch covers a lot of this information, even about Israel. Our handouts, what's that really? The rapture covers these same subjects as well. Covers some of their top questions. We were foretold to watch for His coming. We are commanded to watch. Covers the last generation highlights of that. We are forewarned about this day approaching. And then every single handout on the very last page. How to be saved. How to be saved. That's the whole emphasis. This is why we want them to take these handouts. Because it will remind them in the days and weeks and years after the Lord brings them across this path. That God brought them here for a very important reason. A very important reason. And friend, I want you to be a part of getting these nets into the water. We have been told to launch out in the deep, and this is what we are doing. We are getting the vessels ready. We are getting these nets ready. And with your help, we can get more and more nets ready. We're going forward. I'm working here. I need your help. But as you can see, these are large exhibits, and they do take supplies and provision. They need help. We got all these resources and handouts and booklets that need to be produced. We could use a lot more of them. By the time we get all these exhibits up and out, set up, and have them all filled up with the resources and handouts, we're going to be pretty much going through all the handouts that we have. And that's already thousands because we got several exhibits. And you can see these are very, very large exhibits. And this is why we need a trailer, a whole trailer just to carry them. There's only three three exhibits right here and you can see how big those are 
we got about a dozen of these exhibits and many of them are ready to go today this is why we need a trailer and it's so exciting to see as these are coming to conclusion how the lord is also working and holding and appears to be opening a door for a trailer that with your help lord willing we can get and praise the lord the other day i was able to physically go and look at the trailers that we have been considering and we were told about and lord with our last road trip visit the lord brought these to our attention and so the other day i was finally able to go look at them and they are huge they are definitely going to work for what we need lord willing um, they definitely have the capacity for it and again i've mentioned this before the cost may seem high but these are thousands of dollars cheaper than a car hauler trailer which is smaller incredible how the lord has brought these to our attention a lot more space for um a good amount of money still but for trailers that are in very con good condition and a lot more a lot more usable space man again as you saw with the exhibits they are very large they're going to take up every single square foot of these trailers even just setting them up for display within the trailers as a mobile library but even just packing them full with the exhibits to take them to a school or church fellowship hall or something for setup this we need trailers is because we got so many exhibits so many resources so many nets already that we need these today and just to give you an idea of the scope and the potential that is with the exhibits that we have and how large they are too a lot of people just think oh these are just a few exhibits and you can just squeeze them into a small trailer no these are very large exhibits that we already have today so just to help you expand your mind of what the lord seems to be opening a door of great opportunity and liberty for days ahead to reach thousands and thousands i want you to visualize the space of a typical high school basketball court and the nice thing about these type of venues is they are already set up to handle large amounts of people with the restrooms and traffic and the hallway spaces and they're just built to handle large amounts of people so these typical spaces would be ideal for setting up the rapture library in the days ahead so just for the sake of visualization let's set up 60 chairs where people could sit down and read this library information these handouts and these resources and these books 60 chairs that's a lot of people and again the nice thing about these venues is high schools and even church fellowship halls they typically already have tables and chairs so that definitely is one less expense for us and definitely one less thing to haul over there as well so 60 chairs now if we were to put up in that same space the exhibits that we already have yes these are the exhibits that we already have the celestial exhibit the great deception the rapture questions even some of the review sections the spanish information the brook chair section time israel the final countdown these are the exhibits we already have and you can already start to get a sense this will take up a large amount of space but which also means it could reach a lot of people too those are the exhibits that are already done and if we add in just the six or seven more that we are working on and still have planned it's going to almost entirely ring out a high school basketball court that's how big all these resources that the lord is working to repair the lord is working a special project here to reach a lot of people a lot of fish thousands and thousands and thousands i hope you can see that he's already working on this we've already got about 75 percent of these exhibits done and ready to go today friend i want you to be a part the nice thing about these venues is they are built to handle large amounts of people and if you've ever been to a high school basketball game they can hold quite a good number of people even if they're having a dinner on the grounds or something like that so just imagine how many people could come and see these exhibits if it was set up in a similar scenario thousands and thousands of people could potentially see these exhibits every single day particularly in the first important 24 48 72 hours after the rapture when people are going to have the most questions and when they're going to be the most tender and especially before the great deception really gets rolling as well the lord has given us a very unique opportunity that no other channel has we already have these exhibits we already have these posters we already have a lot of handouts thousands of handouts we need a lot more because the lord has shown us a very important opportunity that we all can be a part of to reach thousands and thousands and very important hours right after the rapture as soon as the tribulation is starting 
And friend, this is why I want you to be a part. Because with what we already know, with the exhibits that we already see are done and ready to go today, and when we see the potential for how many people this could reach with just the assets that we have here, we know God is preparing a place and a vessel and these nets for a very important reason. For a very important goal to reach multitudes, a draft of fish. Friend, I want you to be a part. Praise the Lord, a lot of the exhibits are done and ready. We need a lot more handouts, obviously, but you can see we have about six more exhibits that need to be built and one more display for the handouts. I'm going to build one more display to split up the main frequently asked questions display that we have just so there's not so much information in one spot, make it easier for people to read. So we got about six to seven more exhibits to build and these do go pretty quickly. And again, the most complicated and largest exhibits are already done. And so typically when we have all the supplies on hand and painted and ready to go, it only takes about an hour and a half to assemble and put these finally together. It's the getting everything ready and select and painted and sanded that's what takes so much time getting these ready but these are not near as complicated as what is already done so praise the lord a lot has been done a lot is being done and we need your help to keep doing more reach more in the days ahead again we need more handouts to go with these exhibits more resources to go with them as well and obviously we need the trailer lord willing even if we just get one trailer all the exhibits can fit into one trailer and even some of the smaller exhibits and then boxes for all the handouts and all that so we could get by with one trailer but it wouldn't be set up to be viewable ideally we do need the exhibits ready to go the very first minutes after the rapture so we do need two and so far i've adjusted the layout a little bit so to split the information across two trailers if we can get two trailers and that's what the lord has shown us and he is holding for us and so we're going to keep going forward in that direction just seeing how the lord has worked in people's hearts to hold it for us in ways that i have no control over at all but he is apparently holding both for us so we're going to go forward with our loaves and fishes being girded in his service and doing what we can do toward that potential end goal and probably what we will do is have one trailer as the main rapture library which just focuses only on the rapture related information the frequently asked questions review about the rapture in the old testament all that and also israel and the final countdown the most core information related to the rapture in the prophetic time and then the additional and sometimes more in-depth information such as the celestial information you know, all that will be in the second the annex where the Spanish section will also be as well. So that's the plan going forward so far with what the Lord has accomplished with the exhibits and what the Lord seems to be holding for us as well. The Lord is opening a great door and effectual for us, friend, and I hope you can see that. An opportunity to reach souls. That's why we are working on this project, to reach souls. To reach souls for our Redeemer, the very same Redeemer who redeemed us. And it is our reasonable service to be fishers of men to go out and reach more. And friend, I hope you can see the potential that the Lord is showing us, the potential opportunity to reach so many more than any of us could reach on our own. Yes, we all have our own resources that we have at our embassies and our homes, but the Lord is showing us an opportunity that none of us could do on our own. This is a group project. This is a family project where the sons and daughters of God can draw together, launching out into the deep, laying down the nets, and again, I am reminded of that account in Scripture where Peter called out, Brethren, help us. They had to call to their friends in the second boat. And that's what I'm doing for you, friend. The Lord has laid the burden on my heart to share this information that the Lord has shown us over this learning journey. So I'm going forward on my end with what I can do. But I'm going to ask you for help. Brethren, help me be a part of bringing in this catch. Bring in these nets. Help me, brethren. I need help. I definitely need help. This is way more than I can do. But we've already seen how the Lord is working in incredible ways. He's given strength, definitely strength, and wisdom and liberty to go forward on this project, to launch out into the deep, to reach a great, great draft of fish, great draft of souls for eternity. And friend, the more that I work on this every single day, every single exhibit, the more my heart calls out to you, brethren, help me, help me. Do you see how big, this, do you see how many fish are going to be in this net? I need your help. I need your help, and I want you to be a part of bringing in a great draft for our Father. We have so much that tells us we see the day approaching. Not just the geopolitical situation or the celestial information or even the warnings. We also see how our Father is working on the ground that comports exactly with the expected time where we are right now. 
The time that we saw approaching in the past, the signs that we saw in the past. Again, the wise men went forward on information that was a year and a half old. They did not get updates. They did not constantly search YouTube for more. Oh, I need more information. No, they went forward on what they already knew, which they saw a year and a half ago, which is less than we have seen. So this begs the question, what are we doing when we have seen more than the wise men have seen? We've even seen the same parallels of what they've seen and beyond so much. Are we rising up? Are we going forward in faith? Are we going anywhere? Are we doing anything with what our King has shown us? What scripture foretells we would see and what we would expect. Are we rising up with more information than the wise men had? Are we going forward? Are we rising up with information we have already seen? Already seen. And let us consider one another to provoke into love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Friend, we see the day approaching. Take note that the verse does not say as we see the signs approaching. Don't necessarily look for signs happening now and things happening now. No, remind yourself why do we see this day approaching? Why is the expectation here? It's because of what we saw in the past. Just like the wise men. We go forward in faith based on trumpet calls that went out at midnight a while ago. Signs and warnings that we heard a year ago. Celestial signs that we saw three and a half years ago. Prophetic events that happened 73 years ago. All of those were important prophetic signposts that told us we would see the day approaching. Not that we would see more signs approaching. The signs will tell us we will see the day approaching. And the more we review what we have seen in the past, the more we will see what's pointing to the day approaching. That's what we need to be focused on, not videos about upcoming signs, what that people think are signs. And a lot of times are people just grasping at straws. No, don't try to grasp at new straws now. Grasp and hold on to what we have already seen. And that is why we see the day approaching. That's why we go forward in faith. You know, my job as a watchman is not to show you new things, to tickle your ears and to give you some pep talk. No, read the verse. My job as a watchman is to remind you why do we see the day approaching. It's because of what we already saw. We see it presently the more that we remember what we saw. And when we see the day approaching based on information that we saw in the past, we see our exit coming up based on the signs we saw in the past. We're not looking for more signs. We're expecting the exit based on the signs we saw in the past. And so once we already have seen the signs, we see the expectation up ahead. We see the day approaching. What are we supposed to do? Look for more signs? No. Read the verse. Let us consider one another to watch more YouTube videos. No. Let us consider one another to provoke, provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. That is the number one need as we see the day approaching. Not more signs, not even more YouTube videos. We need more encouraging. We need more provoking unto love and to good works to put legs on your faith like the wise men. Act on what you know. Act on what you have already seen. Rise up, trim your lamps, go out to meet the king, girded in his service with your lights burning, which means you better get working on making sure your lights are burning so that our light is seen, so that our light is on a lampstand, not under a bushel hid away. Here at this late hour, we need to provoke one another because there's going to be so few people provoking and encouraging people to do that. Put legs to your faith. Stop looking for signs and get up and act in faith on what you know. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find what? Faith. Those who are living on what they already know. When the Son of Man cometh, he's not looking for those who know that he's coming. The Bible even records when the wise men came. There were Pharisees in Jerusalem. They could tell you all about the statistics and the trivia information and the details about Christ's coming. But they could not even get up and go six miles to go see the Messiah in Bethlehem. They had a head full of knowledge. 
that did them absolutely no good because it was not combined with faith. They did not put legs to what they knew and they did not go forward out to meet the Messiah. Our king is looking for who is wise and faithful, who is demonstrating faith on what they already know. And this will be seen by who is rising up, who is girding up in service for the king, who's going to be found like the wise men actually going out in service, doing something with what they know. Christ said he wants to find us girded, and that deals with our legs. He wants to find us putting on our proverbial work boots, having our work clothes on, being involved in work, involved in works that bring glory to our Father. And that is how we shine, and that is what he wants to see in our life. He wants to come and find faith exhibited in his servants, and that is how we are a wise and faithful servant. It is not enough to know information about Christ's coming. That does not make you wise. That makes you knowledgeable. But someone who is wise, like the wise men, actually gets up and acts on what they know. That is the difference between someone who is knowledgeable and someone who is wise. Let us consider one another to provoke into love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Why do you see the day approaching, friend? And what are you doing about it? And I hope, just like the wise men, you are going forward on what you have already seen. And we have seen more, way more than the wise men have seen. So we have no excuse. So let's not give excuses. Let's rise up. Let's trim our lamps and let's go forward with no regrets. Going out to meet the bridegroom, hearing him, heeding him, loving him, and serving him first and highest above all else, redeeming the time till he comes. Maranatha.